Time to play with some play. Before we get started in today's uh, video, I'd like to ask you to subscribe and uh, click the little bell next to the subscription button and give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate thumbs up. It shows me that you enjoy my video. All right, let's get busy on the clay. All right, it's Saturday afternoon and uh, I'm going to work a little bit this afternoon on this clay. Um, I just made a video on how to use a pasta machine when you're sculpting and I'll show that. Um, I've got my uh, monster clay underneath my uh, swing arm lamp and I'm softening it up so that I can put it through my pasta machine. I'll show you that process. This is my pasta machine. You uh, put the crank in and uh, you got two rollers that turn and you put your clay through there to give it a flat surface. You can adjust the, the uh, space between the rollers with this little knob on the side by pulling it out and adjusting it till you got to where you like it. These are the rollers uh, that you uh, put the uh, clay through, the flattened clay. Um, these are for wide uh, noodles and this is for the uh, spaghetti noodles. I use this for the fringe. And all you do is just take uh, the handle out and put it back into the uh, thing and you roll the, uh, the roller. And it comes out the bottom. I'll show you all that uh, once I get the uh, uh, monster clay ready to go for this uh, demonstration. I'm using monster clay instead of my normal J-Mac clay. And uh, it's because... I'm making fringe and I want the uh, the structure of the monster clay for the fringe because it holds its shape. So when you got the clay, the monster clay or the J-Mac clay, just warm and just malleable. That's the uh, stage you want the uh, clay in to uh, put through the rollers. You don't want to put the clay through the rollers when it's uh, too soft because it'll stick to the rollers. And then I'm just gonna roll out a little bit. This makes it easier for it to go through the uh, rollers. Oh, and uh, then you just uh, line up your clay with the narrow end of the uh, tube at the bottom where the rollers meet. Then you hold it while you slowly, if you go fast, it'll make little bubbles. And then the uh, clay comes out the bottom part of the uh, rollers in a flat uh, form. Set to the thickness you wanted. All right, now you got the uh, clay flattened out and you put the, uh, the handle in the proper hole and uh, then you just hold it up there over the uh, rollers and it just takes it right in. And you have to guide it through because if you don't, it'll drift off to the side and give you some bad karma. <laughs> now the clay comes out the other side like little fringes. Then you lay it out on something to hold it until you're ready to use it. And in this case I'm using a piece of foam. Alright, that's the uh, process for making fringe. Lovely little machine that you can get at any uh, bakery shop or where they sell cooking supplies. It's, it's wonderful. I, I remember once I was using this in a, a gallery in Palm uh, Desert in California and I was making uh, flat clay for uh, something. I can't remember what it was. And a group of uh, tourists from Italy came in and saw me using a pasta machine for clay and they stood there laughing. I didn't understand a the thing they said, but one of them kind of indicated that they make these over where they live. And I said, I know. 
All right, that's how to use a pasta machine. Um, I've decided to cut back on the uh, shield back to the original one that I had. It's smaller. I've decided to go back to the, the original shield that I had. I like the size better than this size. I know this is probably close to what the original size of his shield was, but I got to tell you, uh, it dominates, and I don't want it to dominate uh, the figure. And uh, sometimes you have to take artistic license uh, and uh, change things a little bit. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, not right now. On this fringe, I came down last night uh, and painted it to match the color of uh, the clay around it. And I found that I can actually fill in these little crevices uh, with... Uh, a little bit of clay and uh, one of my tools that I uh, prepared out of latex uh, and uh, it's going to take a little time to do each one of these but uh, for the uh, wonderful effect that this monster clay creates uh, I'm willing to take that time to do that. It's just going to take time. And uh, so I'm going to work a little bit on this guy's arm. But while I'm, uh, before I do that, I'm going to make some uh, monster clay fringe for this leg, the rest of it, and uh, for this leg. Now, this is about as much as I'm going to do today. It's getting late in the afternoon, and I spent a lot of time videoing how to use my pasta machine. <laughs> so I'll pick this up Monday. I'm just painting the uh, fringe right now that I made so that it matches the uh, color of the uh, clay. Um, again, I'll reiterate why I do this. Uh, it just uh, helps to make it less confusing when I actually photograph the uh, finished clay so that uh, potential clients don't look at it and say, what's that made of? Anyway, it also helps fill in some of the uh, crevices. Not all of them, but some of them. And I can fill in the ones that it doesn't fill in. Um, I put my paint in a jar here. Now what I did was I took uh, a sample of the clay to the uh, local hardware store where they sell paint and they matched the color of the clay. That's uh, and I used a flat indoor paint that's water soluble and I can clean my brush after I get done using it. Um, but it looks good and I'll let that dry over the weekend, and uh, I'll see you guys on Monday. Give me a thumbs up and share my video. And then check out my instructional DVDs, uh, the link down below this video. All right, see you next time.